I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the founder of the church I served as a bishop. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many others have made a similar journey into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about, people who want to share their story. So if you're a Latter-day Saint seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you joining with us. And if you, re if you recall or had watched last time, we, we were introduced to Brent Clark, and he's here again, and uh, just a fascinating story. And, you know, I'm impressed with Brent, Brent's sincerity and his effort to do the right thing. It's just really impressive, and I, I compliment you for <laughs> trying to be a good Mormon oh, boy. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. I, I, we I, learned I, last time that, my best. <laughs> yeah, that you've been on a mission, and actually your first companion was Micah Wilder. Micah Wilder. Uh, there in, uh, in Orlando, Florida. But... You know, just a ra raised in a faithful home, I guess, and a seminary graduate, and uh, went on a mission and through the temple, and come home from your mission, and then things kind of started falling apart a little bit for you. Right. I, I know that happens to a lot of missionaries. Why do you think that is? You know, I I think, um, and like I talked about last time, uh, you you go on a mission and you're exposed to so much more you know, within the Mormon culture. Mm -hmm. And you, you get so much more of a depth of what it's all about. And I think that's why a lot of, you know, missionaries come back. Um, they come back knowing so much more than when they went. And, you know, you could argue that's a good thing, but you could also argue that's a bad thing because, you know, a lot of this stuff you weren't taught as a kid. And, yeah, and you, you know, get exposed to it that deeper so. doctrine of the LDS yeah. culture that, you know, brings up those questions for you. Yeah, so you're kind of raised there in Lyman, Wyoming, and you move away, you said, to, uh, was that a job that brought you away from the area? It, it was. It was a job that brought me away and um, started, you know, working and starting my own life and yeah. doing my own thing. Okay. And, any women in your life at this point? Any girls? <laughs> not anything serious, okay. uh, you know, dating, but... Okay, so tell us kind of what happens. This is about, oh, oh. Six. Oh, six. You came home yeah, from your mission. So for the next home. couple of years, what goes on? So for the next couple of years, um, I move away. I'm, um, you know, just living life and uh, falling. You know, now that I've distanced myself from, you know, my family, the uh -huh. the town with the Mormon culture that I'd grown up in, I start distancing myself from the church. You know, more so, mm -hmm. and um, eventually stopped going altogether. Oh, did you? And you know, when you're raised in the LDS church, I think it's a common thing, and at least it was for me, that, you know, outside of the Mormon church, there's, it's it's either one way or the other way. Yeah. You know, there's no... The Christian world doesn't have anything to offer. Right. And, and so if you're not going to be a faithful Latter-day Saint, then, you know, yeah. you look at those who leave the Mormon church, well, they must be doing it because, you know, they're going out to, you know, do whatever they want. They don't care. They don't believe in God yeah. anymore. They've lost all faith. Yeah. And I don't, I'd never gotten to that point per se, but I'd now found, you know, I'm not going to do this Mormon thing, so I have this new freedom in me. <laughs> and, you know, I started experimenting with different things, um, and it led to a world where, you know, I started smoking, and I started uh -huh. experimenting with alcohol, and uh -huh. um, eventually that led down the road to getting involved in drugs, uh -huh. and led down to um, an addiction um, that took me you know, several years um, to get out of mm. um, just due to that path that I was going down. Were you feeling a lot of guilt and, and disappointed in yourself or, uh, you know, what, how were you feeling about yourself? I, I, I was, but then at the same time, I was enjoying this new freedom. Ah. Um, I was enjoying this new way of life. I, you know, made new friends and, yeah. you know, I kind of lived two different worlds. I would still go back and visit my family. And go to and, church. I'm and sure. go to church. And, yeah. you know, according to them, I was still a faithful Latter-day Saint. And so I would knew, go huh? back and go through the motions and, uh, you know, exercise. That's a tough life to live too, isn't it? It, it is. It is. That dual life. That, that hypocritical kind exactly. of existence and so exactly. on. Exactly. 
And so, you know, eventually this road of addiction, you know, I just was on a downward spiral. Mm -hmm. And uh, it eventually, as, you know, happens a lot of times, I, I'd gotten caught and, you know, was oh. sentenced to a um, prison, prison sentence. So oh. um, oh. not just jail time, but you know, it was serious enough that it was a felony. And oh, dear. Um, I was sentenced to two to four years in prison. Oh, boy. So... And what happens there? So I um, was actually granted the opportunity due to my first time um, being in trouble with the law and um, my age was given the opportunity to go to a, what's called a boot camp, oh. um, which was an alternative to serving the full sentence in prison. Mm. And so I went up to this boot camp program, which was still located on a prison site and um, prison guards and all that, but it was more fashioned after a military style boot camp. Hmm. And while I was there, I met an individual who was also incarcerated, and his mom was a pastor out of Rock Springs, Wyoming. Huh. And, and did she serve this uh, area you were in? Um, she didn't. Oh, okay. um, I was in a whole different area. Okay. Um, but she was a pastor, huh? Right. She friend. was a pastor, and he was the first one who kind of recognized a little bit of the distress that I was going through and one day offered me my very first non-LDS Bible and oh. gave me my first true Christian Bible yeah. and offered me to come to church with him. Um, the prison there every Sunday, you know, they have the church services that they do and yeah. it was a completely non-denominational oh, okay. Christian setting. and. Yeah. I started going with him and, you know, a friendship formed between us and we were able to, you know, go through and start Bible studies at nights and really? when we had free time and started really studying the Word of God in a way that I had never been presented it before and that was a, a grace type, you know, <laughs> faith in Jesus. I, and you just had never heard that before. Never heard of it and never considered it before. But something about it appealed to me. And I don't know if it was the time of life I was in, the situation I was in, uh -huh. you know, how far my life had fallen. Um, but something about it just appealed to me and I, I grasped onto it. Wow. And so this boot camp was only six months long. And then at the end of that you get put out on probation and oh. that's kind of the in lieu of doing a prison term. Okay, so you and so I was released and um, uh, obviously for you know obvious reasons I didn't go back to where I was before and yeah. that life I had <laughs> kind of gotten away from all of that and went back to my hometown um, <laughs> and back to my parents. And did you Try to become a good Mormon again. I did. You know, that's what I fell back on. And, yeah. you know, when you're immersed back into that culture, and I mean, it's like jumping back in the ocean. I mean, you really don't have a whole lot of choice. Yeah, and that's what you knew. And exactly. you were comfortable. And, you know, so many people would tell me, boy, with, you know, everything that's gone on in your life, you need the gospel more than ever. Yeah. And, you know, I didn't have a whole lot of argument against them because <laughs> sure. of where my life had gone up yeah. until that point. And so I did. I, I got right back into the swing of the Mormon um, did you notice lifestyle. Any, did you notice any difference in the discussions from your uh, Christian meetings and, and then now back to Mormons? Did you sense I, I, a difference? I did. You know, the, the Christian meetings were just, they were so upbeat and they were so, yeah. you know, as I know now, filled with the Spirit. And, you know, you go back to that Mormon um, culture. It's kind of bland. It's kind yeah. of, you know, you're sitting And so there. you actually get, go f far enough along to get a temple recommend. I did. I went through the entire repentance process and, mm -hmm. you know, met with bishops and stake presidents and, mm -hmm. um, that takes a lot of I work did. and effort. And, yeah. and you, did you go back to the temple then? And I did. I went back to the temple um, a couple times. I It was right in time for my next youngest brother oh. who was getting married. And so I to got go. to go and watch What temple's him. closest to Lyman? Um, the closest one to Lyman is Ogden, oh, is um, so that's which is you... about an hour and a half. Okay. Well, interestingly, in 2010, you write a letter to... A note. Do you have that? I, I, I do have it with me. He writes Micah Wilder, uh, a cute little, and this is after you, of course, now you're back in the church and you've got the 
right, uh, and I, Temple I, Recommend in hand, and you write Micah this. And uh, I just discovered, um, just through looking through Facebook, I discovered um, Adams Road, which oh, was up and going that. at this point. Okay, sure. And so I kind of started looking into, well, what happened to Micah? And, um, oh, so now you know that he's left the church. Now I've learned that he's left the church, and he's okay. gone, you know, the other way in that. And I get on Facebook, and I write him this letter, which I just said, Wow, just look at you and your groups that you're a part of. An ex-Mormons group, and in the Florida Orlando Mission of all places. Do you know how much I used to look up to you? You were my spiritual he hero. What the heck happened? I know that at one point in time you knew the church was true. I'm telling you now, it is. You know, ever since the first time that I went to Winter Garden and met Max, who... Max, uh, as you know, um, is associated with Adams Road. He was the owner of the hotel at the time. Oh, okay. And ever, so I said, ever since I met him, I felt so strongly that there was a certain evil to him. I never knew what it was, <laughs> but I felt the spirit. I never felt the spirit when I was around him, and I tried to avoid him because of what he was doing with his um, prophecies. I just recently watched the video I sent to my family, which we had talked about last week, um, when I was on my mission and you were bearing your testimony, man, what the heck happened to you? <laughs> and I, I sent that to him. And did he respond to that? He didn't respond right away. <laughs> um, he uh, he had told me later that he read it, and he had kind of sensed what I was going through, and the struggles that I was probably you know enduring at the time. Yeah. And he told me simply <clears throat> that from that point, he started to pray for me. And that's what his answer was. That was so his answer to, to me. And it wasn't um, for a couple months. He, I, I don't know if he was giving me time to cool down or yeah. uh, calm the waters a little bit. He did eventually write me back and he told me, you know, brother, I'm here for you. I love you. Um, I'll continue praying for you. If you ever have any questions, any concerns, you know, reach out to me. Um, yeah. I'm always here for you. Okay, so now what really happens to you? So I'm, uh, you know, my, my faith in the Mormon church hasn't changed. I, I'd gone through the motions to get back into it, but, you know, I still wasn't fully invested. And I still had my doubts. And uh, about this time I met my wife, who was a Christian growing up. Oh. And, you know, we started dating and things started getting serious. And, you know. Well, had you looked for a Mormon girl? or did You know, I just... had and I had dated um, around, but... Yeah, it was one of those you things when I met my love. wife. Yeah, it was meant to be. A God thing, I'm it sure. It was, and, and not a doubt in my mind. Yeah. And, you know, we were still right there in that small town and still right there under my parents' eyes. So she started going through the motions as well. And of going to Mormonism? Of going into Mormonism. Oh, my goodness. Um, she had gone to school down here in Utah, um, went to Wasatch High and yeah. um, Heber. And so she... Uh, knew of the Mormon church and yeah. all that. And so she uh, went as far as to be baptized. She did. Um, she did. Oh it, it was actually a funny story. We were all sitting um, at my parents' house once. We were dating. And my younger brother, who was living there once, um, was there. And they were doing some advertisement on the television about um, a couple who had gotten married under the ocean. They actually put on their oh. scuba gear and went down and got married under the ocean. And I had made the comment to my, then I was dating her, my wife, and I said, well, that would be cool. And my brother immediately looked at us and he said, no, there's no temples no under the temples. ocean. <laughs> and so it was kind of one of those moments where like, okay, how, how far are we into this? I mean, how long, how long are we going to play along with it? Yeah. And she, like I said, she did get baptized. Um, we went to church regularly and once we got married and kind of started our own life, we um, quickly stopped going and it wasn't a month or two before we withdrew our membership from the church. Really, and just like that. Officially huh? came out of it. Did you start going to a Christian church? With... We did. We found uh, an Assembly of God church um, that was located up there in, you know, the Lyman area, yeah. and started going there and started our walk in, you know, walk in Christ oh, in my a whole goodness. new way. Which, as you can imagine, in this small town that's ninety percent Mormon, yeah, that's... and after all I've been through and come back into the Mormon church and got my temple recommend and then just up and leave. I mean, you can imagine the hornet's nest that it stirred yeah, up. and Yeah, and especially with family, I guess. Exactly, and, and family is a hard thing. Yeah. 
You know, a question that I kind of, I guess we never, we don't ask too often with, with our guests, but would you do anything different with your family? Would you, now looking back, was there a better way to do it, or is this just probably the best way to... I think it was the best way when I first came out of the Mormon Church. Um, you know, I was up front with them as to why. You told mom and dad. Uh, and... I told them. I told them about my new um, belief system and, you know, uh, my faith in, you know, being saved by grace alone. Were you going back to your friend's time there? I the, was, the... and I relied heavily on, um, I was back in touch with Mike at this time, and he helped me out quite a bit. Oh, and did he? My wife as well, who was, you know, born a Christian and raised a Christian. And, and so that was, a, you know, a way for me to, you know, get so my... So you were able to share a little bit of this with your folks? And exactly. Did they understand? Were they... they didn't at all. No. And it was very contentious. And I would say if there was one thing that uh, I would change is, you know, it ended in a lot of heated debates, um, especially with me and my dad um, going back and forth, oftentimes ending in screaming. Um you know, are different ways of thinking. And, you know, I'm, of course, deceived by the devil, and I've, you know, lost, f the, lost spirit the spirit and, and, and yeah, you know, yeah. fell, fallen away again. And, you know, in his eyes now, because of my past, I'm obviously just doing this because I want to go back to my ways of drinking and drug use, and that must be That's, the reason. Yeah. And I kind of took that opportunity and backed off and, you know, never really approached it. And religion between my wife and I and my family just kind of became a topic we didn't go into. Yeah. And if I could change one thing, I wish I would have pressed harder. Um, maybe not so much in the anger, but, you know, in a way of love, you know, continue to share that with them. Yeah. Uh, because my heart still breaks because they are still very active in the Mormon church. And, and they just don't know what they don't know. Right. And I think they've come to a little more understanding. Um, obviously, I'm not going back to my evil ways of yeah, addiction. Yeah, see that you have changed. And right, and I... You freedom know, I, doesn't make you drunk. Exactly, and you know, I have stuff. come into a relationship with Jesus, and, you know, um, you know, I share that with them often, and, you know, so I think they have seen the change in it, and yeah. there have been a couple instances where they have come to church with us when really? we've had our children dedicated, and uh, believe it or not, they actually came when I was rebaptized as a Christian. So wow, that's they, a big step. They they were wearing all black, which was <laughs> interesting, but they did show up. So well, that was good for them. I mean, they, it shows that they love you. And, yes, you know, it is it is interesting that we leave the church with a greater love for Jesus than we ever had before as a Mormon. Right. A greater appreciation for who he is and what he did for us that we couldn't do for ourselves. Exactly. But the Mormons just don't, they, they can't quite understand that. And I, I appreciate that. We appreciate that because we were there. Right. Yeah, we just don't. Uh, exactly. And, and like, like I said, fall into it. I mean, I mean, this wasn't a change that I was looking for. It wasn't something I was seeking after. I mean, I was a devoted member of the Mormon Church. I wasn't looking to come out of it. No. Uh, I wasn't looking to have my faith shaken. I went on my mission, you know, trying to do my best. And, you know, seeds were planted and things were done. And, you know, I, well, you even, know, I owe a lot to Micah and, you know, what he did because I believe that, you know, that was the first seed that was planted in me. And it might have taken a little while for that to sprout. But Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people that do leave and go through a, a process there, they don't have Jesus with them. Or they don't bring Jesus with them because right. they just don't have that foundation with him. And exactly. So I'm glad Micah and other friends and your wife were able to kind of help you with that journey, part of the journey. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I notice a cross here. You yes. Got it written here in Ephesians two. Ephesians eight and nine, two eight and nine. Yeah. Which um, you must have that memorized. Memorized. Yeah. Go um, ahead. We are saved by grace. Um, this is a free gift from God, not of ourselves, and not of works, lest no man should boast. Um, mm. Which is, you know, completely contradictory to Mormonism. You know, the Mormonism <laughs> and the way of life. But you know, it was my, you know what I'd come to understand now, you know, yeah. salvation is a free gift that is given to us. And, you know, there's, I know and understand now that, you know, we talked about you know, last time that wall that's between us and God, you know, preventing us from having that relationship yeah. with him. And when you come into that, you know, relationship with Jesus and out of religion, and you understand that it's not so much God and Jesus, you know, throwing us down here in this world and saying, well, 
let's see how good they do. Yeah. Let's see if they can do enough to get back to us. Yeah. But now it's a, you know, while they knew, while God knows we're going to come down here and sin, he knows that we're going to defy him. He knows we're going to go against him. We're going to, you know, take the name of the Lord in vain. We're going to steal. We're going to cheat. We're going to lie. We're going to do all these things. And knowing all that, he loves us so much that he says, you know what, I'm going to send my only son, and I'm going to send him down to the world, and he is going to die for you, and he's going to take care of it for you. And, you know, it's you're a, forgiven. It's before a you even do message. it. simple message. A simple yeah. message, but yet yeah. so complex that <clears throat> it's so easily missed. Yeah. It's so godlike. It is. I mean, to, to be simple and to be... Uh, we just believe in him and we're saved. Right. Yeah, and we have eternal life. Well, you're involved in some other ministries now, uh, helping other people, I guess, mem even Mormons that are transitioning out, but you have a couple of other things going. Right, I do. Um, I Ever since I, you know, became a born-again Christian, you know, I've understood the difficulties of coming out of Mormonism. Yeah. And so I have done a lot of work um, within church groups and that um, with helping those who are seeking to come out of Mormonism mm -hmm. um, and, you know, helping them find that relationship. As you said, so many of them come out and they just leave God and leave Jesus, you know, yeah, completely so behind and yeah. they just fall into this darkness. And, you know, that doesn't have to be the case. And yeah. so, you know, it's a very delicate and a very sensitive matter of, you know, helping them come out and, you know, learn, you know, of the gospel for the first time. <laughs> uh, it's so hard for, you know, yeah, to be to go through your whole life and find out it's a lie, and well, to 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 go through your whole life and not understand the gospel exactly, uh, yeah. and know everything that you have worked for and believed your whole life isn't the way that it really is. Yeah. I mean, it can, it can shatter you, it can crush you, you know, your faith as a whole. And so, you know, I've done a lot of work with a lot of individuals, helping them, you know, tra make that transition from. A religion to a relationship with Jesus. Oh, that's awesome! And then I also do um, a lot of work. I I have a podcast. Yeah, where, tell uh, us about that. I do a What's lot it of called? work with. It's called Sober for Life. Um, that's sober with a number four. So well, well, the, the technical term is just sober for life. Um, the website oh. um, that was obviously taken. So um, the oh. website that um, y people can find information on it is sober. And then the number four life now dot com, sober for life now. And it com. contains um, testimonials of you know things that I've gone through. Um, I started a podcast, um, which is an addiction re based recovery podcast. Oh. Um, yeah, you've experienced quite a bit in your yes. young life. <laughs> yes, and so you know that's a way you know I looked at you know what I've been through and you know the struggles I went through. Another way that I could you know reach out and help others who may be going through a similar mm -hmm. situation. That's tremendous, because I think people appreciate knowing that, that they're not alone. Right. You know, that, you're, that exactly. others have They've gone through that. Exactly, they got someone there, and, you know, a lot of times when you're coming out of religion and, you know, you're coming out of those things, you do feel very alone because, you know, you you base your whole life around that. You know, your friends are Mormons, your, your, the people you date are Mormons, your family is all Mormon most of the time. Yeah. And so when you remove yourself from that, oftentimes you're removing yourself from everyone that you know as oh, well. your whole culture and, and your social. And you're just kind of on your own yeah. um, walking through the dark. And so yeah. it's nice to have, um, you know, in my case, I had several people that I was able to, you know, lean on and help them guide me and so, you know, I look at, you know, myself as... That you helped know, that, you, and so that, you're... That as well, yeah, helping for others. others. Yeah. Well, we got to meet at the... Um, when Adams Road came through here last right. last mm -hmm. summer, and or last fall, or whatever, and and that was... They've done such a great work, and you've been in touch with them, or you, I guess it sounds like you keep in touch with all of them. I do. Of them. Um, yeah, in fact, the Assembly of God Church that uh, we were going to when we lived up in Wyoming... Uh, we invited them out, and they did. They come. They came out twice. So did they? Two really? different, two oh. different years. They okay. came out, and you know, I invited my family and friends. And of course, yeah. they didn't come. But yeah, do yeah. you think your folks would listen to this today? You know, I would hope so. Um, they're. I mean, they do love it, you. It, it, and they do love you. Maybe me. you've they been do. planting seeds. You know, I, I, I do think eventually, if a person's willing, or even has the inclination to, try to understand what what Paul was trying to teach and what Jesus was doing, 
um, eventually those seeds, I think, bear fruit, don't you? I, I hope, I, I know yeah. they do. Yeah. And I can only well, hope that example of that, that is that, the case, guess. you know, with my family, you know. Yeah. We, we do, we try, you know, in every way we can to, yeah. you know, express our love for, you know, the gospel and share it in, you know, ways that, you know, are appropriate for the time. Because I don't think there's any LDS that haven't gone through and put stuff on a shelf. Right. You know, whether exactly. it's polygamy or blood atonement or Adam-God theory or, exactly. you know, I already say polygamy and polyandry and all that stuff that you just don't... Uh, you start thinking, well, is that really They from put God? by the wayside, right? Yeah. So I think even even the best of us Mormons <laughs> in the process, we have those things on a shelf. And, and when when you get an opportunity to really expand your thinking and your and really look at the truth, then all of a sudden those things come, right. come tumbling down. Exactly. So, and that can even happen to... I hope my kids, and yes. you're probably praying for your family as well. Yeah, absolutely. All the so time. you've got just a minute or so left. What would you like to say to your family? And well, you know, and not just to my family, but, you know, everyone um, out there who, you know, may have those issues and be struggling, you know, seek these things out. Um, you know, look into it. Um, you know, oftentimes we go through, and I know myself as a Mormon, you, you know, you shun anything that's anti-Mormon. You don't even go there. You don't read it. You don't look into it because, yeah, I mean, even as a Mormon, you understand that could, that could you know, crumble your foundation of your I, faith. I and, guess. And so, you know, the answers are out there. Uh, don't put things on the shelf. You know, God has told us that I don't do anything in secret. Um, you know, the answers are there for us. It's laid out so simply in the Bible. Yeah. I would I would suggest, you know, as Micah has suggested so many times read and as the, he did to all of us in that meeting. Did he? Um, That's what he said there. Read, and as he was challenged by, you know, the minister when he first set out, you know, go back and read the Bible as a child. And, you know, a lot of us have heard that, but, you know, the whole message of a child is take those Mormon blinders off. Look at it as if you've never heard this message before. Yeah. Um, look at that Bible and just pour into the message that God is giving us. And, you know, as he was promised and as, you know, I can promise your eyes will be opened and, you know, God will show you the light and he'll show you the gospel. As he's uh, I'm us. really proud of you, Brent. And. You said there wasn't a dry eye when Micah was uh, sharing his there story wasn't. there, and and I don't I don't think there should be dry eyes with with your testimony either. It's just powerful, and you know you we work hard to be good, and you're trying, and and, and God opens up your heart and mind, and you come to understand who He is and what he did for us. So Brent, thanks so much for coming. and Thank you for you having me. Kid. It was great to yeah. you know, be on the show. And please say hi to your wife. And I will for sure. <clears throat> and two kids? Yes, two kids. Awesome. See you next time. <laughs>